So, okay, let's go. Um, welcome to the first virtual Glassfish user group event in London, actually. And um, we are doing this together with um, C2B2 Consulting and um, me as a freelancer, basically. And um, the Twitter account is C2B Consulting and at Adam Bean. And uh, if you have any questions or remarks, just use the hashtag London uh, GUG stands for Glassfish User Group. So, um, yeah, hi, um, welcome from um, undisclosed location near Munich, I would say. And um, today I would like um, to discuss with you a little bit um, how to work with Glassfish, how to, um, uh, or what I do with Glassfish, and um, how to use it in context of, um, of Java, Java E7. So I will use here Twitter Live and um, what's uh, with the hashtag London GOG. I will, uh, if you have any questions, feel free to ask and I will um, answer them online. So um, the first question is, um, why Glassfish? Well, um, Glassfish is the um, reference implementation and um, for Java 6 and now Java 7. So I will cover Glassfish v4 right now. And um, reference implementation means, um, yeah, it was implemented by uh, the community with Oracle. And uh, why I like reference implementations? Because um, I guess um, if you find some, some bugs in the spec, um, they are going to be fixed faster because it is um, reference implementation. By the way, uh, Glassfish is not just built by Oracle. For instance, uh, the integral part of uh, CDI is the, um, um, is the weld coming from Red Hat or, or, um, or, or JBoss. And um, yes, uh, what I supposed to do is to cover, um, um, I would say roughly in 45 minutes, uh, Glassfish, and then I will open for questions for the, for the remaining 15 minutes. And um, if there would be no questions, I, I gathered some questions before and will um, answer them. Okay, so um, let's go. Let's go with um, with Glassfish. So this is the um, Twitter location, and um, I would actually use some slides to introduce you, to introduce me, and um, yeah, my standard introduction is um, I never worked actually because I like Java, so um, I'm I'm. Um, Consulting, working with Java since 1997. I started with Java in um, 1995, and um, since then I'm just a freelancer, a one-man show. Um, I'm working mostly with um, Java E and Java SE. Actually, I try to do some some uh, other project with different with other languages, but um, usually uh, clients want actually Java from me, and I'm really happy about this. And um, some usual stuff at the beginning, I would like to um, cover some resources because I always forget them. So um, now is the chance to get it. So I will, I would actually introduce a Lightfish. So there's a small application I built. And um, also there is an application called X-Ray. I would just briefly cover X-Ray because um, it is just loosely related to, to today's topic. But um, I, I use some automation techniques um, for uh, development of X-Ray. So I will show you this. And there is a nice, or nice, um, one class project called Loader. And a Loader allows you to um, deploy, undeploy, and list applications with, um, with Java. Pink is a, um, is a simplistic application. This is actually just a war where you can just drop to any Java 6 or Java 7 project and you can just pink the server with it actually uh, runs, um, um, runs or not. <laughs> I use it because I use, um, several Glassfish running in the background and um, on, on my server. And this is nice to have a, a certain location or certain, uh, certain entry point to, um, uh, to the server. And um, I wrote recently an article for um, Oracle Tech Network. So if you search for Adam Bean uh, Glassfish monitoring, um, the, the article is from uh, December 2013 and it actually covers similar stuff what, I, what I'm talking um, today about. And um, of course, um, I was asked by C2B uh, to deliver a talk about um, Glassfish at the um, London Glassfish user group. 
And I was asked, um, or I, I thought, what is actually C2B2, C2B2? And uh, I actually don't like uh, commercial events. So my first question is, um, what are you are doing and how you are related with Java user group or what, what's the deal with, uh, with uh, C2B2? And um, as you probably know, uh, Oracle dropped commercial support uh, for Glassfish. And I ask, get ask a lot of questions from my customers about um, commercial support in Glassfish. And C2B2 and another company from Belgium called Lodge On both provide uh, commercial support for Glassfish, so, which is actually really nice because if you have uh, some serious projects, you can just um, get commercial support, which is um, not only reasonable for technical, but sometimes even for uh, political reasons. Um, yeah, and there is, um, uh, the um, page is um, C2B, uh, uh, C2B2 uh, CO UK, and the Twitter handle is C2B2 Consulting. So um, we had no time actually to discuss uh, the resources here yeah, with C2B2, so I hope it is okay. So um, I wrote some books loose, loosely related. So actually this book covers a little bit automation in Glassfish and this book just covers um, general Java e-patterns. So it has nothing to do with today's topic. So skipping this and a little bit interesting. So um, I think, no, I think end of March, there will be the next edition of Air Hacks and uh, um, MOOC Airport. This is actually the location you uh, saw behind, um, behind me. So it is located actually here, so 200 meters from here. And, um, and um, yeah, why I do this? Because I um, try to minimize time for travel and why it costs a um, lot of time and I would like rather spend my time in hiking Java, not uh, in airplanes and trains. And it's just impossible to handle um, the uh, request for Java E and, 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 and Glassfish consulting. So. Um, yeah, let's start with why Glassfish? So um, why Glassfish? Um, even a few months ago, I will, I will say Glassfish is great because it, has, it is unique. It, has, um, it is the, um, the reference implementation and you can buy out of the box uh, commercial support from, directly from Oracle and this, these are actually almost the same bits. So you can, you can download the open source version or you can just uh, buy support from Oracle now I would have to say there is no more commercial support, so it, it became a little bit less attractive, but still I'm using Glassfish in majority of my Java 6 and um, Java 7 projects, not like I, I move away to, uh, to Whitefly or Tommy. I still, um, I still use Glassfish a lot, and uh, yeah, and because uh, we have Java 6 and Java 7, it is actually, the application server does not matter a lot. This is actually the, uh, a good sign. So, um, Installation. So um, why, this is, why is this important? Because actually I start every project with installation of Glassfish. And um, of course, so I, what I don't do is not like I'm running one Glassfish and millions of projects. What I prefer is um, one JVM, one uh, Glassfish, and sometimes a shared Glassfish, but one dedicated domain. So there's this, uh, in my projects, I prefer the one domain per project style. And um, why I'm doing this? Because um, the overhead actually doesn't matter usually. RAM does co cost nothing and CPU is um, extremely cheap. So, um, you know, saving money on, um, on uh, because you can save 30 megs of memory running on third server just um, increases the risk and, uh, and you won't gain anything. So, um, so, so well, installation. So what I'm doing, of course, I do what I do right now. I go to glassfish.org or java.net and try to um, find the right uh, edition. And what I al always do, I use the, um, the uh, zip installer and always the full Java e platform. The Java e web profile is a little bit smaller. So let's see. Yeah, 40 max. So you can say 40 max, I would say roughly for, um, uh, for uh, images from, <laughs> from, from, your, from your DSLR. So it, it isn't worth. So I, I also measured some performance overhead and um, there is almost nothing. So I, I just always use the uh, full Java platform. Also in my development projects, I, I'm, I'm, I'm just using the, um, the, the wars and not the, the ears, but still the full Java e platform is, um, uh, is, my, is, is what I prefer. And by the way, I do the same with Tommy. I'm not, not, not using just the, 
uh, the web profile rather than it's a Tommy Plus, and it's the same true for, for JBoss. So um, it's actually almost no runtime overhead between the full Java E platform and Java E web profile, and you know the download size should not matter. So um, any questions so far? No questions, not even from Mycroft. So what's what's going on here with tw Twitter? I assume that Twitter is down. Watching live, watching live. So everyone is watching live and there are no questions. Mike, are you alive? Were your introduction to C2B consultant okay? No news are good news, I suppose. Okay, so let's proceed. So now I'm launching the best Glassfish IDE you can, you can currently get. Um, so of course NetBeans. And um, it comes with Glassfish and this is actually what I will use today. I will use stock um, or stock. This is the release candidate one from, from, from NetBeans. And, um, and it comes with, um, with Glassfish 4.0. What I have because of some com Older projects I have uh, installed afterwards the Glassfish 3.1 and I'm also working with Tommy right now and Wildfly and um, this is a dedicated domain which I forgot to stop. Um, we'll do it right now. Better is it? I completely forgot this. So um, so you see, life is life. And uh, what I prepared is I just, um, I will have to delete this. This is an I opened um, some projects like uh, my Lightfish loader and um, actually just both and I will I will tell you later why why the projects are actually interesting. So to demonstrate why Java E or why Glassfish I would like to hack a very small project actually just containing a um, Java server face um, page and uh, one, one class which is injected uh, and, and one model class is so a very, very basic stuff. So I would like to start with the um, web application and I will call it, um, of course, Glassfish user group, hello. And I will use the Glassfish 4.0, uh, GUG hello is okay and will like to just to create us. So um, as, you, as you see, the um, GSF page, no GSF, HTML page was created and I would just like to create a GSF page. So where is it? No GSF page, then I will create this one. GSF page, the name is index. And for each GSF page, I would like to create a baking bean as well. So um, I will call the class index. And uh, what is I suppose CO UK or UKCO, now the question. UKCO, classic user group, dot hack. S, hex, better, finish. So, and this is going to be um, request scoped. So, um, just shorten this model. And very simple uh, method, um, string, get um, message to, ah, get message, it's just my, my standard, um, standard output. And get message, return message. Okay, I have it. So let's see whether it actually works. And Glassfish starts. If no, I will have to, to kill the whole IDE because I started and an, an, you see another Glassfish. But um, life is life and killing JS, uh, Java has to be, is usually very fast. So, but as you can see, this is the demo effect, it actually works. So um, we have the um, index, which is model, get message, and what we of course need, because we are in the enterprise space, so we need a, an EJB. So how, um, of course there's this an enterprise, glass fish user group, I don't know, facade, doesn't matter. And um, it is an EJB, so it returns you will see I'm in a second why I'm doing this. So it is really Glassfish or Java related. Uh, get um, hello from Bean, from Mr. Bean. Oh, it's an um, English podcast and my name is Bean, so we can use Mr. Bean. Return um, hello from Mr. Bean plus new date to see some action. 
And of course, we can just inject the bean here. Add enterprise, oh, what I'm doing here. Enterprise facade, facade, add inject. So um, we have that. Get hello from bean. Let's see what that works. Nothing happens because I forgot to actually reference the bean. Let's do that. Um, okay, so it seems to work. Now, why I did this? So let's see what there are some questions. Oh, I got the first question, which is, uh, which is perfect. So, um, Mycroft is alive, uh, which is a, a good thing. Uh, I, I saw in their Twitter profile, I think he's doing some snowboarding stuff like this, so pretty dangerous stuff, so glad you, you, you are alive. And, and I got a great question from Alaman from Twitter. How do I connect a single ER application deployed on Glassfish to several clients with different databases? So, uh, different databases, I would say there are different data sources or uh, different uh, persistence units um, or um, uh, so entity managers and uh, to several clients. So um, what I usually you, uh, um, do in my projects, I'm not using the remote client. What I'm using, I'm using uh, RESTful Web Services, so the JAXRS API, and usually this is not a huge problem. So actually the, the, the answer is very simple. So uh, uh, multiple databases use just different um, data sources, or I never use actually data sources, JPA Entity Manager. And with CDI, you can produce different entity managers dependent on the client at runtime. And um, yeah, so I hope you are, you, uh, you are satisfied with the answer. If not, please refine the question. Okay, perfect. So we answered the first, first question. Um, yeah, seems to work. Now, how is this Glassfish related? So um, what you can do with Glassfish You can access Glassfish strangely with a strange URL here. Monitoring domain server. So what I did before, I um, activated all monitoring levels in Glassfish to a higher level. And um, yeah, and um, and this is why I see something. In in your case, you 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 should be able. You should um, go to the admin console and do it is from the admin console or from command line. I will also show you how it actually works. And what you can see here, um, there is a very plain, basic, um, strange looking uh, HTML page. And um, and um, what what you see here is the following. There is um, there is um, another hello application, the enterprise message bars. Just, yeah, the enterprise message bars. That's, um, the camera went off. And um, um, there was another Hello application, and our application is the Glassfish user group Hello, enterprise GUG facade. And as you can see, it is create count, method ready count, remove count. It happens to be an EJB. And uh, there are some bean method get, uh, get uh, hello from Mr. Bean was um, invoked, uh, where is it, method statistic, total, total uh, number of errors, there's no errors, total number of success, 10 times was invoked. It's a lot, actually. And um, the, nice, uh, the nice thing is you can get the information as JSON. So um, what you can see here, this is a JSON document or XML. Come on. XML is a little bit heavier, but this takes too long. Uh, but usually, yeah, it has to, no idea why it takes so long. So JSON, this is JSON. And um, I will refer to this because this is actually nice that we get uh, JSON back. So what we, what, what, we, what we can do, we can access application specific data using this. Which is um, which is um, which is perfect for for monitoring for my projects. We actually do it all the time, uh, just to monitor application during stress testing, and um, 
What you can also do, so we just go back and uh, do the server. Um, for instance, transaction service. So what I did today, just for fun, I wrote a short article how to monitor the number of, of uh, a short post, how, uh, post, how to uh, monitor uh, the number of rollbacks or uh, commits. So um, what you can do here, as you can see, there is an active count of transactions, committed count. So we have 10 commits, which perfectly matches with uh, the number of, um, uh, of invocations. There is no rollbacks and the state is fine. So what we can do, of course, we can say, um, why not a rollback or even, let's be more drastic and just throw new EJB exception just for fun. So, and I would like to invoke the um, page again. So it what was it? 80, 80. It was hello, just for fun. So it's a nice error. And uh, the rest interface, if we just, uh, you see rollback counts, there is one rollback. So you can very nicely um, monitor what's going on live on the application server. So uh, two counts. So everything crystal clear. Alamen is satisfied. And do we have any questions? Oh, John Klingen from uh, Oracle. There's a, I think it's product manager from, 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 from Glassfish. He asked us to take a survey uh, um, about Java 8. So you should do this. Um, yeah. Um, so what, what we did we uh, we accessed via um, web page the, um, the the Glassfish, and by the way, it is a little bit boring doing this from from the um, web page. What you can do, you can um, access the same from command line. So you see here, rollback JSON. So you get the JSON, and just let me go here. So this is a um, JSON output. And of course, it's XML. So you can do the same from command line, which is actually really, really nice. Um, so what we covered a little bit is this JSON monitoring. What you can easily do as well, you can, you can use um, 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 Glassfish for management, um, RESTful services for management. So um, the question is, why I actually used EJB here? And the answer is, Pretty simple. Um, EJBs are monitored. Um, POJOs are not. So if I would just skip the stateless, I use request code beans or state uh, sessions code beans, I wouldn't see I would see nothing. So Glassfish wouldn't be able to monitor anything because um, it is not a part of the J2E management and monitoring spec. So you can only so you can only monitor uh, so or an application service only forced to monitor Java E components. And CDI is not included, so because uh, the specification, this is the management and monitoring specification, predates CDI. Okay, this is why I create the um, EJB and the um, and the managed B. So, um, what you also can do, of course, there is a, a command line client for Glassfish. So I will go to Glassfish Home. And um, there is an AS admin. So it, um, you can access the Glassfish configuration management and monitoring through um, AS admin, which basically is a RESTful client, which um, which uses the same the same interface as as uh, the um, as the as the web page. And of course, there is an AS admin uh, or as AS admin. There is an administration interface for. Um, as a web page, so just would like to show you how it looks like. So you can and you get you get actually 
two views. One is the HTML view, which is the admin console. The other view is a RESTful interface, and you can access the RESTful interface directly or using the AS admin commands. Okay. So, um, any questions? Oh, um, so Alaman is happy with the answer. So, um, it was actually very very simple question, so thank you for this. This is always nice to get such questions during um, during sessions. Um, yeah, and um, what I did before to show you, there is the, um, the, the monitor, and as you can see, the only thing I did is I increased the uh, monitoring levels too high, so everything, this is actually the slowest mode, so everything is now monitored. So um, usually there, everything is off. So you can use this, the admin console, or you can use um, you can use the um, the uh, as admin or restful uh, interface. And by the way, this is what I what I did uh, what I des described in the article: uh, Glassfish monitoring and management. And uh, this article covers, uh, this is a free article of, uh, at um, OTN, and it actually uh, exact, exactly explains how to, how to deal with the, with the levels. For instance, um, to get the um, server monitoring levels, I could just um, go here and access, and you can see you, can, you have exactly the same information from here, or uh, you can set the levels from the AS admin console, or you can use um, um, exactly you can use the uh, curl or, or restful web services. Okay. Um, to get every, anything, you can just say get monitor server. You get all the stuff. This is actually huge. This is actually always fun to do. So I'm not sure whether they should do this in production, but you see, there's actually all the stuff you can get. Just start with it with with the uh, with the command. Uh, monitor server, and you get all these settings, which which are actually can be interesting for you. So, what you can also do, you can deploy applications using the um, the web console, um, or of course using curl. So, um, what uh, what happens here? You can use just curl post and upload an war to um, to the Glassfish. So, why is this interesting? So believe or not, I was in a project and the developers just used the um, the admin console the whole time to deploy applications. And this is really error prone. And I would say what you should do in Glassfish project is to automate everything from the beginning. So the first step is download Glassfish, install this. And the question is how to install Glassfish. So of course you can just use the console to create new domain or use it. Um, but what I usually do is this is where the X-ray project kicks in. Set. So what I did here is I would like to show you what I usually do in projects. Create X-ray domain. So what this is, this is my script, as you can see. It, uh, it started with Glassfish 3 and used with Glassfish uh, 4 right now, which completely destroys Glassfish and reinstalls that from scratch. And if something feels wrong, I just do it over and over again. And on Jenkins, exactly the same happens. So um, on, my, on my continuous integration environment, each commit just drops the whole Glassfish and reinstalls everything from scratch. It, it takes a few seconds, but it is uh, more consistent in, than, than uh, hot deployment, so you can really rely on it. And um, yeah, what you can see here, there is a stop domain, delete the domain, create domain. So what happens here, um, uh, the domain with the name X-Ray is stopped, then it is deleted, then created with the port base 5300. What it actually means, this is really nice. Uh, what you can do, you can automate this with the port base I know right now that Glassfish will create ports 5348 for the administration port, 53880 for SHDP port, and uh, because of development, no password true. Then I just copy some JDBC drivers. I'm starting the domain, setting JVM options, 
creating on the fly the connection pool, the JDBC resource. And um, the connection pool is created just with mock passwords. So I just changed that, XYZ, XYZ, and, and the port number. And then this classfish is ready to go. So whatever happens, I just able to fire up the script. I just, just do it. So what can go wrong, right? Create X-ray domain. So as you can see, it creates all the ports and uh, creates a um, and and creates an application server from scratch. So this is the installation procedure. What I always do first. So actually, all my open source project or my client projects, whatever I do with Glassfish or even JBoss is the same story. Actually, it always starts with automating the whole process, installation process. Um, before that, I just used one Glassfish uh, by um, and and I don't know multiple projects uh, used the same Glassfish instance, and it, it was a real it was a mess actually. And now everything is 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 really nicely isolated. So, any questions? So let's see. No questions directly. And London. Ah. What uh, John Klingen mentioned is um, use case under consideration for Java 8. This is uh, GSR and multi-tenancy support. If it is meant this way, then, uh, oh, no, this is actually a question today. What about using a single war application depending on Glassfish to several clients with different realms and databases? This is a good thing, fights, um, fights bash. bash. Um, Actually, what I, I would go a step further, what I I'm, what, what I'm, would really appreciate in, in Java 8 is to, having, to have the um, um, capability to have multiple context URIs in a single war. This is even more, more painful, to have one war with uh, multiple um, entry points, so you, can, so you should be able to specify the uh, context URI within the war. Right now, it's, it's just a default. So um, the Glassfish or the application server takes the name of the war and creates the context um, URI. And of course, with uh, ear, you had the opportunity to do this. If you have just wars, it's impossible. So this is actually a great question, somehow Glassfish related. So perfect. Thank you for questions. So now we installed um, an application server. So it is running. So this is what actually happens. I just wanted to try behind the show whether it actually works. So and now we have an empty Glassfish here, which started just for us, and um, to prove whether it is actually working. So this is 4.8, it's a default, and there should be another one with 5.3, 5, 5, 5, 5.3.8.0. Oh man, 5.3.8.0. Yeah, and this is uh, our freshly created Glassfish. So um, let's see. Installation, I think, is covered. If there are no questions, I will just um, move a little bit further. Management. So, um, as you probably saw, what, what you can you can do, you can equally well do something like this. I could say Glassfish Home, bin, AS admin, and just use the same commands. Almost. Yes. I could use the same commands from a script. This is what you actually saw in my, in my batch file. So if there is anything to set, to configure, I, what I usually do, I create a, uh, not a Maven project, it's just a mock project, it's just a folder in, um, in Git or Subversion. And this mock project just contains the Glassfish configuration files or the Glassfish script. And this project is checked out on CI, continuous integration environment, and uh, usually Jenkins, in my case, performs the configuration. So if anything changes, we only have to commit the change to the repository and everything else happens automatically. And if you would like to influence your local Glassfish, I have to run, I run the script locally then. Okay, I think the installation is covered. No questions. And thank John for, for answering the question. This is actually really nice. So um, I'm almost jobless. <laughs> so management. Um, another thing um, which, is which is nice is if you know the RESTful API, what you could do, you could create a Java application or a Java class which uses the JAXRS client 
and is able to deploy applications to the application server. So now the question why you would like to do this and the answer is, well, you could automate the process even further. You could use um, uh, an, an Maven plugin or Gradle plugin or integrate it with your IDE or use it, use it, use it even from, from, from Jenkins. And uh, we had to automate the whole installation process, a kind of wizard. And um, what we did, we, um, we, used, um, we used the... Um, um, this class, and this actually open source project, so this is this loader what I mentioned. So I go GitHub. There's GitHub. And then bin X-Ray. This was the X-Ray project, and I think loader is the other one. Yes. And um, what uh, loader, loader is able to do you can deploy it an archive. In my case, is the um, coffeebeans.war. I can check whether the archive is deployed. I can list all the applications, just um, see what is actually deployed. And um, yeah, let's run it. Let's see whether it actually works. Um, so there is a test, unit test. Let's see whether it works. So now it um, goes to the current Glassfish and attempts to deploy the application. So it seems seems to work. So it um, there is an, an another hello. It uh, also found the uh, Glassfish user group hello and coffee beans. And the workflow would just deploy, undeploy, and list all applications. So I'll just try this. But um, as you can see, it is very easy to automate a common task on Glassfish. So you could even write a cloud-like API where you can automatically deploy, undeploy, and manage applications and domains. So feel free to use lo Loader. Uh, it is Apache license, so you can do whatever you like with it. Um, so. No questions. OK. Monitoring. We saw a little bit of monitoring, and the question is why is monitoring so interesting? And I would say, for me, it's monitoring actually crucial. So I'm working as a consulting and uh, as a consultant. And um, what, I, what I see in project is the following. So there is a huge um, focus on uh, test coverage, so unit tests and integration tests, and no one cares actually about robustness and stress tests, which is crazy. And uh, it is really easy and fun, actually, to write, to write um, stress tests. But the question is, if you just have stress tests, um, you, you, you should be able to see what the application server does in, uh, behind the scenes and what happens behind the scenes. And um, the, the following idea, what you could do, of course, you, can, you could write a REST client, which periodically um, fetches the information from Glassfish and stores it somewhere during the stress tests, so you can analyze the results after, af after the stress test, actually. Because if you just connect with um, mission control or, or JVisual VM as a mission control without the flight recorder or a visual VM, um, the data gets lost. Nothing gets persisted. So you will see the graphs, the charts, but not the actual data. And um, so what I did, I wrote a very simple application. Actually, the first, first version I wrote it in train between uh, Frankfurt and Munich. And um, I would like to start the application for you. So it deploys the application. And this is the, um, the um, Lightfish I mentioned earlier. And this is also on, on GitHub. And it's called Lightfish. And this is one of the more popular projects. So this is, um, now it is deployed. But uh, what I wanted to show you, this is actually the release I'm using right now, is the um, Lightfish War was deployed, and the Light View app is a JavaFX frontend, which is able to, to uh, monitor the application. So um, let's see in the action. So um, what I would like to do is to go to the Lightfish project, and there is 
the um, light view and I can just start it from the command line. So if you clone the projects, the same should happen on your machine. And uh, as you can see, there's this JavaFX front end. Why JavaFX? <laughs> because I had no time and JavaFX is just Java, so I hacked it in the train. Of course, this took a little bit more time, but the first, but the very first prototype was built, I think, in th three and a half, half hours. So I had a hard deadline. So um, I just um, started the, um, the, the monitoring. And what you can see here is that um, I have to activate the monitoring first and then start it. And what it does, it monitors the heap size, the thread count, and the peak thread count. And um, um, there are snapshots every 10 seconds. So I can monitor the transactions. Again, what, what happens behind the scenes, this um, light view just uses this JAXRS client, fetches the, the GlassFish data, and uh, the, the, the GlassFish monitoring data, and displays this. So there is a number of commits and, 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 and rollbacks. So we have the two rollbacks because of the two um, exceptions. So what we also have, <laughs> paranormal activity. So um, this is actually um, the most important view uh, during stress tests. So what happens here, we have the acute uh, connection. So what it actually means, um, it actually indicates whether the glassfish is overloaded or not. This is actually the, um, the chart here. With, uh, we see three arrows. We can actually increase the number of arrows easily. So if you go to localhost 8080 and what was it? So doesn't, doesn't work anymore, but as you can see, there is an error. So we, uh, with this simple case, you see, we can just um, see live w whether there are some errors or not. And queue connections means um, the glassfish has nothing to do. Um, performance, commits per seconds and rollbacks per seconds. So you shouldn't be proud of rollbacks per seconds, but commits per second is actually interesting uh, during during um, um, a load test or stress test. And um, different topic, but I make a difference between um, stress tests and load tests. So what stress tests just um, is, is a uh, test designed by developers and developers where developers try to break the application server and load tests are designed by usually not designed specified by the business department and uh, the business department attempts to be more realistic. So um, stress tests are not realistic, but uh, they try to break the server and um, load tests are realistic, but um, far not that appropriate for robustness testing because um, load tests are full of think times and uh, you just decrease the probability that you will actually find the error. So web, you should see uh, the number of sessions and the um, expired session, so it seems like a bug. So we have minus one session, which is quite interesting. <laughs> so our applic application is extremely stateless with minus one session. Um, resource double pool, so we, so we have um, eight connections, not seven and a half, eight. And there's a timer pool, that's the internal glassfish pool. But even more interesting, uh, for unknown reason, why? Ah, I know why. <laughs> what happened, our integration test for loader undeployed our London glassfish user group uh, application. So um, it actually worked, this is why it's green. Deploy, checklist, undeploy, and everything which was deployed was undeployed. So it worked as designed. So let's redeploy the application. Let's see whether it will actually appear. As you can see, now we have the Glassfish user group hello again. And there is the enterprise uh, GUG facade. As you can see, um, there is no index because index comes, um, uh, it's a, just a POJO, a CDI bean, so it is not visible for Glassfish. If you click on this, we see a um, number of created beans. Once is created, once is destroyed, um, no one is waiting, and uh, there is no uh, th uh, threats were waiting. And this is just um, general performance characteristic. Hello, hello from Mr. Bean. There is one success, one invocation uh, count, and um, one invo was invoked once. Max time is zero milliseconds, and total time is also zero. So it's actually pretty fast. So let's see whether it actually works. Now, 
So difference, invocation count. Success 40, max time one, total time, so one millisecond. So we are able to, um, let's see, still nothing cute. So this is basically Lightfish. And um, yeah, and um, what I did before, I just activated the monitoring with this activate monitoring tab and what happens behind the scenes, um, it sends a REST request to Glassfish and activates the monitoring on the server side. I use the tool all the time for stress testing and it runs actually on my server in production. So the overhead is, is relatively low. So let's see whether we get some questions. No questions. No questions. John is also happy. So then I will kill, would like to kill the application. And um, automation. So now what, what we can now do, so what, 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 what we did right now is the following, right? So we were able to access the um, RESTful API from Glassfish, domain server, and um, let's say transaction service, and we have um, or go just go to the applications. Why not to this? And you would like to monitor something in Glassfish user group enterprise facade and bean methods and hello get hello from Mr. Bean, so this. So what I did is previously before Java 8, um, availability of Java 8, I, use, um, I used um, how it's called, not Nashorn, but the thing before, um, I forgot the uh, Netscape project. Um, so it was the embedded JavaScript engine coming with JDK 1.6 and um, it, was, it is also a kind of Nashorn, I forgot actually the name. Um, uh, it, it, it was the JavaScript engine, the, 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 the very old one, uh, which was created by, by, by Netscape. And um, right now, you can do something crazy. So um, I would like to create an HTML, HT automation, an HTML5 project. Uh, no frameworks. But what I would like to have is a plain JavaScript file. Um, Automation, automate JS. It's an oh, automate JS is actually a nice name for a JavaScript project. So because I use it a lot, I created a NetBeans template. Why I create HTML5 project because of syntax highlighting and GitHub, uh, sorry, Git access and stuff like this. So um, what you can do very easily. So. I can just say, I would like to have the command here. And the nice thing of, um, of uh, Nashorn is you could, you could create more maintainable things and say, this should be the um, server and the var server is localhost and, or could be even passed as uh, from, from the outside. Localhost. So, locale. So, so far, so good. Don't have the question what you can do with it. Now, the crazy thing is what you can do with, with, um, with Nashorn. I can exec this command, exec, and say curl dollar command. The output resides in out for result. So let's try this. So there is the script automate.js. I installed JDK 1.8, so it should work. Um, usually, if you if you um, uh, install the, the uh, daily builds, you will have to set a link. There is actually described to the um, JGS interpreter, but um, I will also have to 
change the mod to auto to executable automate.js so no news uh, good, uh, good somehow good news curl command nothing server localhost so let's try that still not Just print the command. So the server is not expanded because I forgot this one. Let's see. Looks nicer. So what we have here is just the raw string. So nothing exciting yet. But what we can also do, we can say this is the string. So we can say parse, uh, no, JSON dot parse and use the result here what I get back is the is the uh, let's say one object so let's see whether it works print one object you see it works so this is object so um now we can access, so let's see whether we'll be able to do this. So there is a um, message command and entity. So extra properties is, I think, the key. So what we have to do is to use command. Let's try this, dot command, or extra properties. Try this, extra properties. Play with it. Still works. So extra properties is defined, otherwise we would get an error entity dot entity just go one further. So there we have the um, ex entity and I think count. Count. Undefined. But you see where I'm going with this. So um, extra properties, entity, I think execution time count. So let's say entity dot execution time. Execution time count. Entity execution time count. There is something arrow between, but you see where I'm going with it. Let's see um, what's actually the difference to the transaction count from today. Um, entity rollback count, so it looks execution time. Let's see the... Uh, oh, there's this lower T. count and I would expect a number right now execution count is one execution count is one so um what you probably can see what where I'm going with it this JSON parse is interesting by the way this script is executed is a, is a Java is, a, is a actually a Java application running so what you what you what you easily can do you can use the RESTful API from Glassfish to automate processes and why to use JavaScript in favor of Java because it is very easy to access the um, the um, the to, to parse the uh, JSON objects from from uh, from Glassfish in in Java is a little bit more error prone. So right now with the JSON API um, is fine, but it is not as easy as here. So you can very easily write monitoring scripts. For instance, I use um, stuff like this for testing on continuous integration server like like um, Jenkins. And um, and this is actually the reason why I don't know the as admin um, uh, commands very well, because from the one and automate whatever I can, and then never look at them. So I just they are executed in the background. Um, okay. 
So what is actually the future? So what we covered is, so we covered the management, monitoring, so you can manage uh, Glassfish. What also works, you could of course change the um, XML files. So you can directly manipulate the XML files from Glassfish. And, but this is actually not recommended and um, it is uh, hard to maintain. So it is way better to use the AS admin or um, RESTful, or uh, the RESTful API to do this. Okay, and the future. I, I would say the future is even more exciting than, um, than, 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 than Glassfish right now. What I'm doing right now on my server, I'm using a tool called, um, called Docker. And what happens behind the scenes is the Docker downloads Glassfish. It creates, downloads JVM, and creates the whole image, creates the operating system, as a co Linux container was the operating system, and launches the, the whole operating system in a few seconds. And um, I even automate, you know, the, uh, the, the full provisioning. And um, this is why I actually use Nasson for the automation, because Docker also comes with JSON and, and, and the RESTful API. And um, Glassfish, similarly Whitefly, this is also similar, both are great for, uh, for automation using um, RESTful API. And why JSON and not XML? Um, the only reason why I prefer JSON over XML is the, the, the accessibility. It's really easy to, to work with uh, JSON, and you can access them from Python and Ruby and very easy, and so all the, um, the operations can just um, access uh, more easily than with, than with um, um, uh, XML. And the question, uh, why not, uh, why not uh, JMX? Java management extensions are fine. I actually, I could write you an, 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 an singleton bean which, um, with JMX in a few minutes. The only problem with JMX, uh, JMX is um, a little bit harder to access because uh, with JMX, you will have to, um, to, to use specific tools to access the, um, um, to, um, yeah, to, get, to get the information. And with uh, over REST, you can just access the, um, the API directly. Um, so I think, I covered a lot of ground. It is, we are a little bit over time, which is not a big problem because um, yeah, we are in virtual London, so it shouldn't be a big deal. So I'm really open to freestyle questions. Oh. Ah, what, um, what John Klingen said is, hmm, I imagine Lightfish using Nashorn to allow users to define their own attributes to monitor. And uh, it is already implemented. <laughs> so, um, So if you go to uh, show you a secret feature from, 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 I forgot actually to blog about this. So if you go here and say new script, see whether it will actually op open the window or not. Oh, this is how exception looks like in JavaFX. So um, what, um, this is probably the reason why, because we're running on Java 8, but uh, what happened before, um, Lightfish gathers snapshot. Um, so it remembers two snapshots, the current one and the, and the recent one. And what you can do is you can write in JavaScript right now in Lightfish a script which compares both and escalates prob the problems over, um, over REST channels. And I'm going to implement the same with uh, over, over WebSockets. This is actually the idea here. But um, defining the... Um, the, the, the um, Attributes could, could, could work as well, of course. Well, thanks, John. I see whether we have any questions here. London. Lightfish is shaping up Yeah, quite nicely, yes. I, ho I hope uh, Glassfish as well. <laughs> so let's see whether probably someone asked a question via the AirHex channel. No. So... Um, any questions? Mike, C2B2? Mike, any questions? C2B2 again is the organizer of, um, of the first virtual event. Usually um, I was asked to come to London, so okay, let's try to save time and do it from here. So this is actually, and they say yes, yeah, so of course, why not? Um, any questions? If not, see you at AirHex. The virtual workshops, no virtual. There are workshops at Munich Airport. They could be virtual in one point of time, but right now, 
JRJS workshop at Munich Airport. So, um, any questions? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, no questions? Then I will publish the whole um, screencast again um, on YouTube on my channel and um, uh, in a higher resolution so you can see it afterwards. And yeah, enjoy Java E and enjoy Glassfish hacking. Thank you for watching. Bye.